Hello, dear traders. Last week, the U.S. stock market slumped, reaching its monthly lows. The growth we saw earlier had lost momentum. It is still hardly possible to predict when the market will be able to recover. There are risks of a deeper drop. Currently, investors are avoiding risky assets amid the likelihood of a rise in key interest rates and regional conflicts. Traders are also paying special attention to the reporting period. Thus, the new week will shape future market sentiment. The next few days will be the richest in reports in this season. About one-third of the S&P companies will disclose their figures. Meanwhile, traders will also wait for the PMI data, the Fed chair's speech, and GDP data for the third quarter. The publication of the SCPI report will close the week. Stay tuned, the financial market is always reaching unexpected and interesting events. Watch the video to the end and share your opinion in the comments. The dynamic of the U.S. main stock indices points to a possible surge in the volume of short positions in the upcoming days. On Friday, most indices fell. In particular, the Dow Jones, S&P and the Nasdaq lost 1, 1.5%. Notably, the market recovery, which began early this month, reached 5%. However, later the indices tumbled to the levels seen at the beginning of the summer. Such a sharp change in market sentiment could be partially explained by an unprecedented rise in bond yields. When credit rates increase, a company's debt obligations grow and the stock market price falls. If the Fed continues to keep interest rates at high levels, the yield of 10-year bonds may exceed 5%. On Friday, it already jumped to 5%, the highest level since 2007, but then declined. On Monday, it advanced again to 5.025%. This caused concerns that the yield would stay at such a level for a longer period. The situation was also aggravated by Jerome Powell's words about a possible monetary policy tightening. Against this backdrop, the key indices opened the new trading week with a collapse. The tension in the market is also rising ahead of the expected publications. Important tech companies will disclose their figures on Tuesday. Microsoft and Alphabet will publish their reports. On Wednesday, all eyes will be turned to Meta and on Thursday, it will be Amazon's turn. Stocks of these companies together with uh, those of Apple, Nvidia and Tesla contributed to a 10% rise in the S&P in the recent year. That's why any disappointment may lead to considerable consequences. At the beginning of the week, Apple's stocks dropped amid the news that Chinese tax authorities had launched numerous investigations into the iPhone company. Meanwhile, shares of Nvidia increased by 2.7%, whereas Tesla reported a 1.3% rise in its share price. Notably, last week, Tesla's stocks uh, tumbled by 11% as the data was below the forecast. The company's earnings were also affected by a drop in the e-vehicle price. Since the beginning of the year, the minimum price of some car models has decreased by one-third. During the given period, the S&P lost 2.4%. This was the first decline in the last three weeks. The S&P opened the new week at its monthly low near 4,200. Curiously, at the start of the month, the index jumped to 4,400, recouping more than 50% of its losses during the sell-off period that began in August. Later, it faced resistance. In the, in the trend continue, if the trend continues, the index may slide to 4,000. The center of gravity for the bears is seen at 3,945 or minus 6%. In general, the S&P and Nasdaq Composite returned to their initial levels at 4,200 and 13,000, respectively. These levels could be used to enter the market for mid-term trading. By the end of the year, the market may climb. At present, volatility is quite high. The bulls are supported by some seasonal factors. 
During the last month of the year, U.S. indices grow very often. However, Morgan Stanley doubts that the S&P will climb until the end of the year. According to the revised forecast, the S&P will close the year at 3,900. In general, due to, the, to overestimated expectations for corporate earnings, stock valuations and current monetary policy in the U.S., the likelihood that the S&P will return to the area of 4,300-400 points uh, seems low. Previously, these levels were considered support. Experts at Wall Street anticipate a 1.1% decline in earnings for the S&P companies in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, earnings may soar by 5.2%. Interestingly, the forecast for corporate earnings in the next 12 months reached almost all-time highs. Last week, the Nasdaq 100 slumped by 3.2%. Like other main indices, the Nasdaq is also searching for support. Notably on Monday, during the U.S. trade, all three indices left the red zone as a sentiment slightly improved. Nevertheless, the dynamic is mixed. The Nasdaq climbed above 14,500 points where it was seen at the beginning of October. When the indicator approached the upper limit of the range, it tumbled, thus proving the resilience of this area. Since the overall situation in the market is not favorable, the Nasdaq is likely to continue falling, with a possible target at 13,700-14,000. The level of 13,700 was considered a key one in August 2022, whereas the level of 14,000 was a kind of limit. Since bears seem to be lucky at the moment, let us find out where they move in the short term. Thus, the area around 12,700 is likely to be the farthest level. The Dow Jones closed the previous week with a 1.6% uh, drop. Like its counterparts, it will hardly rebound. The fact is that investors are experiencing numerous risks from overestimated earnings forecasts to U.S. monetary policy tightening. Speaking at the Economic Club of New York, Jerome Powell stressed that an additional increase in the key rate remained an option for the Fed. He noted that the central bank paid attention to various factors of instability, both old and new ones. The Fed is trying to find a balance between the danger of raising rates and the risk that a too low rate will not be able to keep inflation under control. Large investment institutions are expressing moderate interest in U.S. stocks because of economic instability and an increase in government bond yields. Thus, J.P. Morgan expressed its cautious vision of the stock market, emphasizing that the situation would remain the same as long as high interest rates, inflated valuations and geopolitical tensions persisted. In this context, J.P. Morgan recommended reducing the share of stocks in the investment portfolio by increasing investment in gold. We continue to monitor the stock market situation to keep you abreast of the latest events. Subscribe to our channel and leave your comments. We are working for you, making the most relevant video reviews every day and every week. That is all for now. See you later.